NVIDIA themselves are only claiming about a 15% performance improvement for the 5080 versus the 4080 when you don't factor in multi-frame generation. And their claims on the same graph for the 5090 ended up being pretty close to what uh, reviews ended up seeing. Uh, we also have some leaked results now that seem to corroborate this general performance uplift. So let's talk about all of the information we have available right now. So the 5090 versus 4090 uh, from NVIDIA's claims plus some leaks came out to about a 30% average. And again, NVIDIA's claims on that slide were about 33% and 5090 reviews are now, uh, now out and they are showing an average of about a 30% performance in, uh, increase. Some outlets show a bit more, some like mine show a little bit less, but they average out to about a 30% uplift. So NVIDIA's claim on that same slide showing a 15% gain um, would us uh, maybe incline us to believe that that might be about what we should expect. Um, now, in addition to that, there's been a leaked Blender benchmark score that is showing a 9% uplift versus the, the 4080 a 22% uplift in a Geekbench Vulkan leak and a uh, Geekbench OpenCL leak showing 7% uplift. Now the OpenCL result for the fifth, when a, when a result leaked for the 5090 wasn't super accurate, whereas the uh, Blender and Vulkan uh, Geekbench uh, results that we had uh, were closer to what we actually saw on uh, the 5090 results. So uh, I would say we're probably closer to the ignore the OpenCL result uh, type situation, which would put us in the, well, if I just geomean all the results, it gets to about 17% uplift generationally. And again, NVIDIA's slide that was pretty accurate for the 5090 was showing about 15%. But how do we interpret that? I think it would be helpful to put it in the context of the entire 80 class. By the way, all my sources for the leaks and stuff will be in the video description description. Uh, one I just found in the Blender benchmark stuff. I think somebody posted on Reddit. And then there's also a Tom's Hardware article about the uh, Geekbench stuff. Anyway, how about the historical context of the 80 class to interpret these results? What is a normal performance uh, versus the previous generation? But what's a normal price change versus the previous generation? And how does the price to performance ratio generally uh, change generationally? Uh, we'll talk about all of this right after you, you, I try to help you avoid a big mistake. So many people make a huge mistake when upgrading their gaming PC setup by forgetting the desk that it will be sitting on the whole time. Flexispot just helped me upgrade the disaster of a desk the school gave me in my classroom to a beautiful standing desk. I game on my lunch breaks in a sitting position, and hey, don't judge me, I can technically call it researching games game performance for the channel, right? Uh, but I can also easily go into standing position while grading, and Flexispot even sponsored me with an amazing incline walking treadmill with a two-year warranty, so you can stand by the quality, uh, and that can get me some exercise while I'm grading. And honestly, that's huge because teaching and running a YouTube channel at the same time requires me to be extremely efficient with my time management. And over the years, Flexispot has been an amazing sponsor for uh, my channel by also upgrading my wife's classroom desk from the disaster that her school gave her. She teaches preschool. And honestly, her coworkers got a bit jealous and Flexispot came to the rescue again, upgrading multiple teachers' desks at her school. Y upgrade your desk and maybe even improve your health with a walking treadmill by clicking the link in the video video description and or pinned comment. Okay, so how do we interpret this in context? Uh, well, first of all, the 5080 has had a $200 price cut compared to the 4080, although technically the 4080 Super already did that $200 price cut. So that's a bit of an elephant in the room. Also, the 4080 is an anomaly. It's a massive outlier in the history of the 80 class. Uh, the pricing from 780, 980, 1080, 2080, 3080, 4080, 5080 goes 650, 550, 650, 700, 700, 1200. 1,000. So even though 1,000 is a $200 price cut, it's still way above what was typical, even if you adjust prices to current values for inflation. I use the US Bureau of Labor Statistics to just type in the GPU release date and adjust it to uh, the, the newest month they had available when I was making this chart, which was November of 2024. Uh, historically, the 80 class was basically around $850-ish 
until the 4080 happened when you adjust to current day pricing. So basically it was just consistent and then 4080 destroyed everything. Why did that happen? Well, the 3080 never really sold at $700. We had crypto boom followed by pandemic shortages uh, leading to massive scalping 3080s sold well over $1,000, and so NVIDIA realized, oh, we can charge over $1,000 for an 80 class GPU. Let's do that with the 4080. And I think that's what happened here. So realize that the $200 price cut in the context of the history of the 80 class still puts the 5080 as generally overpriced by about $150. So do keep that in mind. Uh, how about the performance improvements? So the 780 versus the previous generation 680 was a 24% uh, performance improvement, but every other generation delivered much better than that. 980 was 38% faster, 1080 was 51% faster, 2080 was 39% faster, 3080 was 63% faster than that, and the 4080 was 49% faster than that. So the 4080 at least delivered reasonable performance uplift, but a horrible MSRP. So there's that. And now where am I getting this performance data? This is from Tech Power Up, um, their relative performance chart, which again, I will link that source in the video description. I understand it's not perfect, but I don't own all of these GPUs to actually do my own benchmarking for performance data. Anyway, so if you actually look at the price, to, uh, the price changes, uh, generally they stayed you know, somewhat consistent uh, until the massive 4080 differential. But then if you divide the performance ratio by the previous generation's price ratio, we get this column, which is how much more frames per dollar do you get when buying the 80 class generationally? The 780 was actually pretty bad. It was a 5% decrease in frames per dollar at the 80 class, that generation. The 980 offered 62% better performance per dollar uh, because while being a 38% per, uh, percent performance increase, it also was about 15% less expensive. Uh, giving a 62% improvement in performance per dollar. The 1080 was 28% improvement because while it was 51% faster, it was also 18% more expensive than the previous generation. The 2080 was a 29% improvement because while it was 39% faster, it was 8% more expensive. The 3080 had an MSRP that matched the 2080, coming in with a 63% performance generation gain, giving it a 63% price to performance improvement in the 80 class. That's why the 3080, everybody was so excited about it. Uh, and then again, you couldn't ever actually buy them at that price. So then, uh, NVIDIA now tries to price anchor the 80 class at that way inflated above $1,000 price point, realized it didn't sell well, so the 4080 Super was effectively the same performance at a $200 price cut. So when we interpret the 5080 in that context, the $200 price cut actually happened a year ago with the 4080 Super, and so it's much less exciting than it would be now, and keep in mind, with this new price anchor, um, yes, it's only 83% the price of its predecessor if you ignore the super class, but it's also um, uh, still about $150 overvalued compared to the $850-ish range that the uh, 80 class has typically been in. Now, if we do take this geomean of 1.17-ish uh, as just a guess to what the 5080 versus 4080 might be, or you could take NVIDIA's 1.15 that they're showing on their official performance slide, uh, then we could get some more information here. If we do 1.17 divided by the uh, 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 performance, sorry, the price decrease ratio at 0.83, we're actually seeing a 41% price to performance improvement. Um, but keep in mind that while it's a 41% price to uh, performance improvement, the previous generation was a massive reduction in, in the price to performance ratio. You actually were worse off than with the 80 class, the previous generation. So again, it has kind of a low bar to set when it comes to that. Uh, the numbers don't change much if you just uh, ignore the leaks and everything and just go with that one slide from NVIDIA. If we go 1.15 uh, divided by 0.83, uh, that gives us like a 39% uh, price to performance improvement versus the previous generation. So basically, that would put it kind of in a no typical uh, performance to price ratio uh, generationally compared to what we saw in, in a lot of the 80 class. But again, that needs to be interpreted in the context of a follow-up to the worst value 80 class card we had ever seen. Now, 
How you wanna interpret all of this, I will leave, leave that up to you. That's the overall results that I have uh, if we try to just stick to the facts. Again, all my sources will be linked in the video description, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.